now, the Palin Update with Kevin Shola presents Liberty and Legacy. Here's Tamara Colbert. This week, we heard a lot about fast track and President Obama's 11th hour push to get congressional authority to use it in negotiating a secret Trans-Pacific Partnership Trade Treaty. Well, I was actually on Capitol Hill when Obama made a rare trip to the House to try to impress upon these representatives how important the bill was for him and his legacy. Thankfully, enough Democrats voted no with Republicans who had common sense and handed a massive defeat to the president. But what should raise alarm bells to all Republican conservative and grassroots activists around the nation is the fact that Republican leadership not only has been pushing in the House and the Senate to help the president get this, but now since the defeat this last week, they're saying it's not dead and we're going to push this through. Well, why? Why is that? This is a bad deal any way you look at it. And when it's secretive and the American public can't see it, it's even worse. Fast Track was nothing more than an extreme and rarely used procedure initially created by President Richard Nixon to get around public debate and congressional oversight. Fast Track was used to get us the North American Free Trade Agreement and the World Trade Organization, which haven't really helped America all that much. This congressional runaround empowers the executive branch to skirt Congress and use these secretive trade agreements to get around policies and laws. Who's part of Fast Track? Well, besides the administration, about 500 plus official corporate U.S. trade advisors. Who are those guys? I don't know who they are. Have you seen a list? I haven't. But these guys have access to everything. And these same people have been setting U.S. trade agenda under both Republican and Democrat presidents since Nixon. Under the U.S. Constitution, Congress is the only branch that gets to write laws and set trade policy. And for 200 years, these key checks and balances have helped ensure that no single branch of government has had too much power. I see it as nothing more than lazy. We have legislators derelict in their jobs, and instead of asking for more information or more time or counsel from actual professionals in the art of negotiation, they've passed this unconstitution they have passed their constitutional duty to unauthorized entities. But what's most disconcerting here isn't the fast track proposition, but it's why Republican leaders want it so desperately for the president. There's nothing good in this deal if they will not allow the public to see it. And of course, many of you have probably already heard that Congressman Ryan had his own Nancy Pelosi moment this week when he made a remark about the trade deal and said, quote, it's declassified and made public once it's agreed to, end quote. What? Are you kidding me? Didn't President, uh, um, Congressman Ryan, when he was running for vice president, uh, blast Nancy Pelosi for this moment? And now he's basically re-edited her statement and using it, he's part of the leadership pushing for this trade agreement. Shame on you, Congressman Ryan. The text of these trade deals are so secretive members of Congress and only high-ranking staffers can read it in a secret room with no cell phones, no pen, and no paper to take notes on it. It's 800 pages long. Here we go again. Do you think anybody's actually read it? And without being able to take notes, has internalized or understood what it means? I don't think so. Congress now can only get an up or down vote and won't even be able to add amendments. And the Senate vote threshold has been dropped to a simple majority rather than the two-thirds or 67 votes needed to pass treaties as specified in the U.S. Constitution. Folks, The point is, no one on Capitol Hill can be trusted. I'm outraged and you should be outraged because we've got Republicans elected in historic elections since 2010, given a mandate by the American people to stop President Obama's overreach and the federal government's unconstitutional behavior. And here we are, no one is listening. Our votes, our voices are falling on deaf ears because Capitol Hill and the federal government has their own agenda and it doesn't include you or I. That's crazy. We are beyond voting in the right people, but I want to give you a real message of clarity. There is more we can do, and that is to use Article 5 of the Constitution to rebalance power and take it back from D.C., and put it back where it belongs and where the founders intended, and that is the states. The Constitution, my friends, is only a piece of parchment if we let it be. 
I think the Constitution is Thor's hammer, and we need to put the smack down on the federal government right now. We don't need the Avengers. We need the American people. We need we the people, you and me, together. Let's use it. Let's use Thor's hammer that we have, which is the Constitution, to stop the federal government's abuse of power. Join me at conventionofstates.com. I am Tamara Colbert for Mama Grizzly Radio. Tamara Colbert in Texas. Tune in for more Liberty and Legacy next week. And to learn about Convention of States, head to conventionofstates.com. Now our weekly commentary, Steel Resolve. Here's Sarah Steelman. Thanks, Kevin. Hillary Clinton's big second announcement came as no surprise to anyone. What was a refreshing surprise in her speech was the story about her mother that she recounted. Her mother taught her that everybody needs a chance and a champion. According to Hillary, she asked her mom what kept her going through a very difficult life, and she said, kindness from someone who believed she mattered. Then Hillary continued to outline a long laundry list of progressive programs for government to implement if she is president, starting with daycare and preschool for all American children. Although she didn't give any specifics, my guess is that if she has her way, the federal government will will require every public school in America to offer preschool. How else will she accomplish this goal? Will she require every child to start school at age three now? Hillary's mother obviously had a very difficult childhood, but she took responsibility for raising her daughter, Hillary, More government is not the solution to all problems, as Hillary and her liberal elite believe. Parents actually taking responsibility for their children by spending time playing with them and teaching them and simply loving them would solve a lot of problems in this country. That's a novel idea, isn't it? Notice Hillary's mother did not say kindness from a nameless government bureaucrat. She said kindness from someone who believed she mattered. Perhaps Hillary should heed her mother's advice and believe in the power of individuals making the difference in America, not more government. This is Sarah Steelman for Mama Grizzly Radio. Tune in again next week for another segment of Steel Resolve right here on the Palin Update. The Palin Update, including Liberty and Legacy and Steel Resolve, is on demand and available for download. So just head to mamagrizzlyradio.com, pick the show you want to hear, and you can listen anywhere, anytime. That'll just about do it for this edition of the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. Be sure to visit mamagrizzlyradio.com for continuing coverage of Governor Palin. Also, like Mama Grizzly Radio on Facebook and follow along on Twitter at Mama Grizz Radio, at Kevin Shola, at Tamara Colbert, at Sarah underscore Steelman, and at 3DSTS. And I'm doing some writing for Breitbart News. Go to Breitbart.com and search Kevin Shola. I want to thank Sarah Steelman, Tamara Colbert, and everyone here at Mama Grizzly Radio. Thanks to Victoria price and thank you for listening today a special thanks to our sponsor 3d security and training academy visit 3dsta.com the palin update is produced by lena anderson the andy l kramer and laurie ann lewis join us next time right here for another edition of the palin update on mama grizzly radio i'm kevin shola have a pleasant day